Hello everyone, welcome back. It has been a long time, but we are back again. In the previous video, we have started creating the business services and we have created this one and we have created this, the first function. We have stopped on a specific problem, which is we want to bring the identity data like the user ID or let's say all the data related to the logged in user for that specific request like the user ID, the time zone info, to convert the date time to a specific uh, format and uh, to the user time zone. So basically, we need to find a way to push the data from the HTTP context. It's existing in the, because it's all the claims are existing in the token. We should bring that token from there to the services in a gentle way that's going to make it easy for us to continue building our services on. So to do this, I will create a new project here and put a set of options within that. I will, this project will be called infrastructure and it's going to contain all the infrastructure stuff like the options, the attributes, tickets basket, dot infrastructure, click OK, great. I'm going to remove this class like this and here I'm going to add new folder I call this folder options and for this video the first class I'm going to create will be called identity options you can call it something else if you want but I prefer this name and here let's make it public and the first property and the most important one which is the user ID of the logged in user this is great here we need another stuff like other identity uh, properties i don't know exactly for for this video we, we need only the user id but this is why i put it in a specific object but in the near future we will use the time zone info as i've said maybe the role and the other stuff so uh, another tip on our way, like the, this comment called to do, it's some magical comment. It's adding basically a to do item to, all, to this task list here. You can find it here from the view task list. So, in this way, whenever we click this, it redirects us to here. So, this is great. Right now, I'll go to the API. Here, I'll right click or I'll right click on the dependencies, add reference. I'll add reference to the infrastructure project. This is cool. Now, what I should do basically to make this happen, whenever any request comes, I will check if the user is logged in, I will fetch the ID and fetch the claims I want, and then I will configure that options and register that in an dependency injection container. And after this, I can inject this options in any place in any class. So to do so, I'll go to the extensions, service extensions here and I will create a new function static void configure identity options this I service collection services like this this is cool but there is a question how we can fetch or how we can access the HTTP context from here or from other services like basically in the controller we have access directly from the parent class uh, uh, for, for an object called HTTP context that has the request and the response but how we can access this here basically there is a specific service uh, provided for this reason called IHTTP access call accessor which is basically an interface we need to register that in the remittance injection container so we're able to access the request and the response or let's say the HTTP context in general so here it's already built in in the .NET called add HTTP context accessor like this so in this way right now when I access an instance of this here I'll be able to fetch the request and then do whatever I want so what I'm going to do right now is to register an options so I will start it directly by typing services okay 
I should rename this to services and then I'll call add scoped and that's of type identity options this identity options we have two one for the Microsoft and one for us like this one okay great I'm not going to use this one I'm going to use the second overload for this function which basically takes uh, a delegate to construct the object and this delegate takes a parameter I will create an index expression service provider what basically this provider is doing it allows me to access all the services I want from the dependency injection container and the first service and the one that I'm care of which is the HTTP context accessor so I'll type here HTTP context accessor like this equals sp dot get service i http context accessor like that and here simply just like this so right now here i have access for the http context the request response and the user so this is cool now if i go here this is an instance of that when i click dot as you can see this is the http context dot this is the request we have the response and of course we have the user as well so this is cool I will just retrieve here the HTTP context instead of, and yeah, let me change the name to make it a little bit short just call it the context and here what I'm going to do is also first I will create an instance of identity options because the new identity options like this and at the end of this function I will return the identity options and here if the context dot user dot identity dot is authenticated what I'm going to do right now if the user is authenticated to populate the properties of those options other than that they are going to be the object will be created but the properties will be null so the first property and the only one that I have right now which is the user ID I can get it from the name identifier claim and to get it I'll go to the context dot user here I have array of claims that came from the access token I can use a function called find first to get the first uh, claim and I can call another function which is find first value so it's basically just return the value directly or I can pass the type here and then call the value to get the value of that so I can directly call first value like this and here I should pass the type of the claim I'll use the predefined claim here claim types existing in system dot security dot claims dot name identifier which is basically represent the ID click like this that so this is cool right now I have a string represent the user ID what can I do what user ID Uh, sorry uh, by mistake I've added okay like that dot user ID equals the user ID in the claim and here I will add to do configure other identity properties so this is interesting let's make a very quick recap for this function and see what it does basically so here we are using the add scoped and I want to register an instance of identity options so I'm using here the service provider and a func delegate that takes a service provider as an uh, as a parameter and it returns an object of type identity option that's going to be registered in the dependency injection container so the first thing I retrieve an instance of the IHTTP context accessor and 
This service allows me to have access to the HTTP context, the request and the response. And in this case, I'm using it to have access for the user that's being constructed from the claims within the access token. Then the second step is I have created an instance of the identity options and I've checked if the user is authenticated. What I'm doing is I'm fetching the user ID from the user claim called claim types dot name identifier. This is the value of that claim. It's being uh, added to the access token by Microsoft. And here, after I fetch the ID, I'm setting it in the identity options. And at the end, I'm returning this object to be registered in the dependency injection container. So if the user is not authenticated, then there is going to be an instance, but the value of the user ID is going to be null. That's pretty simple. What I can do right now is basically to inject the service or this options whenever, wherever I want. So let me do that here. Identity options. We should add reference to this project. Type options. Then add a constructor. Identity options. Like that. Okay, great. Now, because I want to test this and this function is not implemented yet in this class, what I can do is I can try to inject these options in our test controller, which is basically the weather forecast controller. I'll click here and let me try to inject another instance of identity options. I'll call it identity. Identity options, identity, identity here equals that one. Cool. And here, debug, debug dot right line, identity dot user ID. This is interesting. I'll put a breakpoint here. And let's run the app and see what's going on. Okay, great. This is our API. The, this function is protected, this endpoint. And for the client, if you remember, we have the fetch data component, which is also protected. If I want to access it, I should be redirected to the login page to a login. Okay, cool. Let me enter my credentials. Great. I'll click sign in. Amazing. Okay, let's wait a little bit. The request has been sent. Ah, oops, we have got an error. If you click F12, what we are going to see is ASP.NET Core Server 500. Okay, cool. I will come here and let me see what is the issue exactly. Unable to resolve a service of type Tickets basket. Ah, sorry. Yeah, we have created the function, but we haven't registered that in the dependency injection container because we need to make a call for the configure identity options. We have typed the function, but we haven't called it. This is interesting. Okay, cool. Again, let's click on fetch data. Okay, enter my credentials. Succeeded. Let's wait a little bit. The request has been sent. And our breakpoint has been hitted successfully. And let's see if the identity, okay, the object is existing and the user ID, as you can see, here it is. So we have bring that data of the user, the claims of the user as a very gentle options, gentle object 
that could be injected everywhere in every project. So here we go. This is the user ID. Let's keep going. Let's remove this one. This is our data. This is great. That was pretty easy. Right now we can proceed with the services and continue with what we have started with. For example, this one. Right now I have the user ID here. I can use it directly to call this function and get the profile of the logged in user. It's going to be almost in every service because this is very important data and especially in the near future when we implement the globalization, localization also with the date, date time to convert the time to the user time zone. We are going to set another property here. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that and if you liked it, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to support us for more. And see you in the next video.